Now this show is titled Slaying Satyev. And we've already watched Brandon take out Bovisar in one of the most epic matches in Olympic history. But what happened in the following days and weeks would come to shock the wrestling world almost as much as the upset itself. And so here it is, folks, the aftermath for both Slay and Satyev. After Brandon beat Satyev, he advanced to the second stage of the Olympics, the bracket, where if you win, you move on, lose, you go home. And at this point, only three matches stood between Slay and that coveted Olympic gold medal that he had been dreaming about since 1984. In the first round, the quarterfinals, Brandon took out the Kazakhstan wrestler. In the semis, he had the Turk, Adam Baraket. Now Brandon Slay has really been an impressive wrestler. Who would have thought, coming into this year ranked sixth in the United States, that he could get into the semifinals and perhaps, as we're looking now, get in the match for the gold medal? How does somebody turn around that fast? After nearly four minutes of wrestling, Bearcat led 1-0 and was on top working for a turn. No back exposure, a reversal. That should be a reversal by Slay. A great job of balance to prevent from being turned. And the presence of mind to counterattack right away and catch Bearcat while he was off balance. And now he's going to get the gut wrench too. Two points for the gut wrench. The shoulder of Bearcat hit the mat. Once again, Brayden's gut wrench was the difference maker as he held on to beat Bearcat and advanced to the Olympic finals. There he wrestled Alexander Leopold of Germany. Leopold, outside of Satyev, was the consensus number two at this weight class. He had been a multiple-time world placer and a 1994 world champion. He is going against Alexander Leipold of Germany here in the blue singlet. Leipold, this is his fourth Olympic game. He's got a medal. He's going to try to make it gold. Brandon Slay has never medaled before in major international competition. This should be a good one. Leipold was towards the end of his career. We had scouted him too. He didn't seem as much of a threat, you know, certainly as Satya. That's Roger Reyna, Brandon's college coach. So, kind of felt, hey, this is a really good position right here. After three minutes of wrestling, the first period ended scoreless, which meant that the second period would start in the infamous clinch. But they will start in the clinch position. There's the toss of the coin. It was blue. Leipold will have to take the lock, and if he can't get a point on the board, Russ, in a minute, he will receive a one-point penalty and be cautioned. Now imagine two wrestlers standing chest to chest, on their feet, with an over-under position. That's basically the clinch. So now Leipold and Slay are standing chest to chest, center mat, as they jockey for a lock. And it's hard to know what what was happening. Certainly they were both jockeying for position. If you look really closely and Brandon will tell you, you know, Leopold would um, appear to lock his hands, but then back himself away as if he couldn't and look to the ref and he did that repeatedly. Um, so was he feigning an inability to lock? Um, you know, Brandon did at one point, you know, back his hips down low and away so as not to get thrown. They ultimately both did get locked. Um, but then the caution in two came up. Oh, Slay it. needs, yes, yeah, Slay needs to stand chest to chest. False he keeps starting. backing out. Yeah, false starting. And they're going to hit him with a caution. Oh, the, That'll be two points. That's going to be a two-point caution against the American. And he's going to be probably put down by Leipold. But two points is huge. When you give away points, especially two points, God didn't have to earn them. You're putting your opponent at a serious deficit, you know, a serious disadvantage. You're hearing from Kevin Jackson, Brandon Slay's coach, who was in his corner as that match took place. And so we were all frustrated with that. That really is a, um, a ridiculous call, right, to, to, to give away those kind of those kind of points. And you, and you know, Leopold's defense was really, really strong. So to give that guy, you know, a, a multiple point lead, um, you're setting him up for success. Action resumed with Brandon Slay losing two to zero and down in parterre with Leopold the veteran on top looking for a turn. Here's Brandon. 
So he's on top trying to turn me and I pull his hand away and I squeeze it. And I'm, my grip's pretty strong, but not like break your hand strong. And I pull his hand away and he's like, ah, ah, he starts screaming. The ref slaps my hand, gives me another caution, gives him another point. And this oh, caliber boy. of wrestling. And now he's going to get called again for something with a hand. I think he was grabbing the fingers of light pole. Normally a referee will come in and slap the hand if their hands are intertwined. Here he comes right out and hits him with a caution. Another point for Leopold. At this point, the ref had single-handedly given the German three points in a matter of 30 seconds. Well, obviously, you know, when a guy doesn't get a takedown, when a guy when a guy is able to uh, jump out to a substantial lead from no action at all, uh, uh, that that um, that's frustrating, right? That's Kevin Jackson. He stood in the corner helplessly as he watched Brandon Slay try and claw his way back in the match. Really hasn't been any wrestling technique, and Leipold of Germany is ahead three to nothing. As the match ticked into the final minute, Brandon's dad, his coaches, his friends and family held their breath to see if he could pull out one last miracle. He's back on the single leg, but a nice counter there by Leipold. Leipold threatened to tilt there, threatened to throw. Slay released the grip on the legs to prevent from being thrown. Oh, oh he's going to work it into a takedown. Well, time is not in his favor either. We're under a minute and another point. The first technical point right now for Lipo, but he's ahead four to nothing. With, 40 with 20 seconds left, Brandon continued to push the pace and charge that Leipold. He needs to go for a throw. He needs to tie up upper body and just give it everything he has. Lipo putting a number one in the air, sensing victory, and that's going to do it. That will be it. Alexander Leipold will win the gold medal. That was it. The match was over. No gold medal. No dream come true for Brandon Slay. He stood on the mat with a look of disbelief as he watched Leipold run around waving a German flag. I was really angry the night I had the silver. This doesn't get shared enough, but I'm going to be really candid and share it. But I was so angry after that match that... I didn't shake hands. I didn't shake the ref's hand. I didn't shake Leopold's hand. I just walked off. As Brandon stepped off the mat, his college coach, Roger Reyna, watched with a look of disbelief. We certainly know that, you know, the wrestlers didn't get to decide that match. And I think any wrestling fan at any level would hope that the officials were relatively invisible in any sporting event for that matter, and that the athletes get to decide the match. Um, and unfortunately, that didn't happen that night. A few sections away, Johnny Cobb, Brandon's high school coach, was also questioning what he had just witnessed. We're all coming, what the, what happened here? You know, God, you know, silver, yay. <laughs> you know, who wouldn't give their eye teeth, <laughs> you know, to have a silver Olympic medal, you know? But it was still kind of, what just took place here, you know? Ah, it, it was bittersweet, I guess, the best way to put that. Was Brandon's match the result of poor officiating or blatant ref tampering? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I do. I think that there was uh, some uh, corruption involved. I'm sorry. I hate to say that even, but yeah. I asked Brandon the same question. I want to ask you this. Do you think there was foul play with the official in that match? I do. I do. I, not the official. I think the officials. I think that the United States have been doing so well, that we were doing so well that uh, for the United States to have another Olympic champion um, was not going to be perceived as a good thing. So I think that there was um, some poor decisions that were made all around in that match. Is that why you felt frustrated on the awards stand? That's really what, that is why I felt frustrated. I just felt like I didn't get a chance to wrestle. I feel like, you know, they gave him the two points off the clinch. I felt like they put me down. I was fight, hand fighting like I normally do. They slapped my hand. I felt like they gave him the magical third point. I felt like they put me down again for way too long. It was just, I just felt like the match was just totally taking, taken out of my hands where it was almost unwinnable. After the match, Brandon had to compose himself as he put on his Team USA warm-ups and stepped onto the Olympic podium to lay claim to his silver medal. His dad, Doug, 
watched on from the stands. He was sad. And Leopold, while they were standing up there, told him, because I saw Leopold look at him and like he bent down, whispered something to him. And I didn't think nothing about it. And later I asked him, I said, did he, did he say something to you? He said, yes. Yeah. He says, you, you can, you'll have it next time. This is my last time. Leopold's words were no consolation for Slay, who stood on the second place podium with the silver medal around his neck. I had a lot of anger. Uh, I had anger on the ward stand with the silver. If you look at pictures of me on the ward stand, I wasn't smiling. I still had a lot of anger inside of me. I just, I was just like, it was just like, why? It was the biggest match of my life, the worst calls ever made. Like, this is not what I dreamed of. I'd spent my, my, since I was eight years old, dreaming of being an Olympic champ. I got always the final match. And like, this was going through my brain and that crap happened. Yeah. Like that's, that's how it's gonna go down. Those calls, really? And so there was a lot of anger. After the medal ceremony, the arena emptied the fans went home, and just the wrestlers and a few officials remained to conduct drug tests. After Slay was done, he grabbed his things and headed for the door. But when I walked out, thinking I was going to be walking back to you know my, my hotel room a couple blocks away alone, which seemed kind of depressing too, not only was people out there, there was about 40 people out there. And it was all my family and a lot of my friends. You know, it was my high school wrestling coach, my mom, my dad, my grandma, my aunts, my cousins, <laughs> best friends. Like They were all out there and they were all just like open arms, clapping for me, crying, telling me how much they love me, how proud they were of me. And so I would say it just really, it melted my heart and my heart changed. Mm -hmm. At that moment, I realized that why am I angry? I, I'm so blessed. I got second in the world. One of the people waiting in that crowd was Brandon's college coach, Roger Reyna. We rallied around Brandon um, at the, down there in Sydney. Uh, I, I want to say we had over 50 um, Penn uh, wrestling alums and friends. And, you know, one of Brandon's teammates um, was living and working in Sydney and, and hosted a, a, you know, a reception at his place. And, um, and we really rallied around him. And I think in every way we could, you know, we rallied, we rallied around him and, and still we were scratching our heads like, what happened in that match? After the closing ceremonies, Brandon returned home to Amarillo to a hero's welcome. I get back to Amarillo and this kind of gets to your question. Like they end up having a parade for me in downtown Amarillo down Polk Street, which is Main Street. Seemed like the whole town came out. I'm in a red Corvette. You know, sitting on the back and, and people were following me. You know, there was, you know, high school marching parades and a lot of these youth wrestlers carrying their youth wrestling clubs flag down the street. Anyway, really awesome. It ends at the end of the street. I get a chance to speak at the end. I tell everybody a similar message. I'm starting to formulate this message now, right? But it, it's because it's coming from my heart. Thank them all. There's more to life than gold medals. Awesome day. Parade. Amarillo, Texas. I get back to... You know, my place, I'm kind of sitting there with this uh, literal, like, coffee table with the medal sitting on it, the silver medal. And um, it's really cool, you know, to be an Olympic silver medalist. But, you know, people start saying, hey, Brandon, it's been great hanging out the last few days. It's great going to Sydney, but I have to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been great. All this stuff's been great. But, like, I got to go back to work. I got to do this. I got to go do that. And I'm kind of alone. And herein lies the curse of the Olympics, if you're an Olympian. Eventually, it's over. The chaos dies down, the fans go away, and people go back to normal life. And then here you are sitting there with the biggest goal of your life in the rearview mirror, trying to figure out what's next. And that was Brandon, as he sat in his living room in Amarillo, Texas. I end up kind of checking my emails and this one teacher she emails me and said, hey, would you bring your silver medal up here and talk to the elementary school? And I replied back, I was like, nah. I said, I'll come up there and allow them to see my medal. I said, but I've never given a public speech before. So I I said, I'll, I mean, I'll let them see it. I'll give them some hugs or whatever, but I'm not really comfortable giving a speech to the whole school. And she, I love that she did this to me. She replies back and says, says, Brandon, I just saw you beat one of the best wrestlers of all time 
if you can go out there and beat the Russian, you can come talk to some second graders. She <laughs> called you out. She like totally that. called me out, right? And I love that she did because I was like, you know, like touche, right? So now Brandon, who's a week removed from the biggest event of his life, is standing in an elementary school gym in his Team USA warm-ups. The whole entire school is in this gym. They introduce me, I start speaking, and I just think it's normal that that the kids aren't that the, that the kids are being quiet. I just think, well, that's just what they do. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a speaker speaking. I get done speaking, all the kids clap, and she comes up to me and she's like, Brandon, they haven't been that quiet in I don't know how long. <laughs> we have speakers come here all the time and we have to tell them to be quiet fifty times. And yeah. they didn't say one thing the whole period of time. Like she's like, You need to go do that at every school in this town. And I said, What? I was like, well, how many schools are there? She's like, I don't know. Let's figure it out. So she helped me find out there were 78 schools in Amarillo. Elementary, middle school, high school, you know, private, public, all that, um, charter. And so I set a goal. I thought, what was the best gift I could give back to Amarillo, Texas for all Amarillo had done for me? Is I was going to go take that message to all the kids in Amarillo, tell them you could be from Amarillo, Texas and be an Olympian, Olympic champion. You could be the best in the world at whatever you want to do and you can be from this town. Oh, now, the, by the way, your mom and dad could be divorced. You could live with your grandma like me growing up. Like, having a broken family is not an excuse. So get rid of all these excuses. So anyway, I kind of developed that on my message. And I set that as a goal. And I spoke to, I think, 74 of the 78 schools in Amarillo. And the only reason I didn't speak to the other four is they just they said they couldn't fit me into their, to their schedule. So I tried. And I did it all for free. That was my gift. As Brandon was making the rounds throughout the Amarillo Unified School District, a rumor began to surface. A rumor that started in Switzerland, made its way to USA Wrestling Headquarters in Colorado Springs, and all the way to Roger Reyna's office at the University of Pennsylvania. I remember sitting back in the wrestling office at Penn, you know, after returning to Sydney and kind of like, you know, getting back in the swing of things with our college program. And at some point, you know, word came through that the two wrestlers tested positive. And, you know, one was a random, you know, test um, out of the field and one was a, a champion. An Olympic champion testing positive for steroids. That's big news. And a week after the Olympics, that guilty wrestler appeared before the IOC to plead his case. A week later, on October 16, 2000, the International Olympic Committee announced which Olympic champion had tested positive for steroids. I was actually in Dallas when I'd heard the first time. I was at my mom's house in Dallas, and she kind of woke me up out of bed. It came early because I think it came over from, from, I think, Switzerland or something. And uh, the guy tells me that, hey, I just want to let you know that that Leopold tested positive for Nandrolone. and he was like 20 times over the limit, and you're the new 2000 Olympic champion. Again, you know, I just woke up. So like, I'm like, you know, I, I, I like, what? And I was like, oh, what? I said, well, can I wrestle him again for it? And I think that's our, our natural inclination to work, right? Don't just give me something for, for free, like I need to work for it. So I'm talking about, hey, can I wrestle him? And finally the guy's like, look, Mr. Slay, would you, do, you, do you want the gold medal or not? And I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Leopold's positive test meant that his name was wiped from the record books. It was as if he had never been at the Sydney Games. Immediately, Brandon called his high school coach, Johnny Cobb. Then when we found out who it was that cheated, cheater, anyway, uh, we thought, all right, yeah. <laughs> Turn best fair play there, brother, you know? You know, well, he's a damn cheater, okay? You don't deserve a gold medal if you're going to cheat, you know? USA Wrestling decided that the best place for Slay to receive his gold medal was none other than the Today Show. And so a week after hearing the news that Leopold had tested positive, Brandon, his grandma, his dad, and a few close friends boarded a plane to Manhattan. So to be on the Today Show that morning in Manhattan, my grandma, they flew her in. She stayed at the Waldorf Astoria. They drove, drove around in a you know, limousine. You know, <laughs> like She never would have gotten to do that if it wasn't for that moment. You know, my parents, a lot of friends came from Philly. Coach Reina, we were all there. I finally got to seeing the Star Spangled Banner, and they put the gold medal around my neck. It's a lady named Anita de France, um, 
and she came in, she would have given gold medals in Sydney as well. So they really did it as close to the Olympics as they could have. And I'll never forget, you know, I, I bent my head down and she looked at me and said, you will forever be Olympic champion. Over 7 million Americans watch Brandon Slay receive the gold medal on the Today Show. A medal that he dedicated to his childhood hero, Dave Schultz. After returning to Amarillo and finishing his speaking tour at the Amarillo schools, Brandon began speaking to organizations across the country with his message, Greater Gold. After a brief comeback in 2003, Slay officially retired and went into corporate real estate. But in 2009, he was pulled back into wrestling full-time when he was hired by USA Wrestling to be our national development coach. There, he led Team USA's junior and cadet teams to some of our best finishes ever at the World Championships. In 2016, he took a group of wrestlers to Dagestan where he finally saw Satyev again. The two embraced and took a picture as friends. Today, Brandon Slay is the executive director of the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center, where he's helping other athletes reach their Olympic goals. Day in and day out, he works alongside his college coach, Roger Reyna. What's Brandon Slay's legacy to the Penn program due to you? Well, you know, I, I think that 17-year-old who came up from Amarillo, Texas to be a pioneer, you know, I, I think he, he did that as a collegiate wrestler. I think he did that as an international wrestler. Um, I think he's done that as an Olympic level coach and national developmental coach. Um, and I think he's doing it here, you know, every day with our Olympic Regional Training Center, the Pennsylvania RTC and PRTC. So I think, you know, that 17 year old who was excited about the idea of being a pioneer, you know, I, I think that that journey's still continuing. And Satyev? Well, after his loss to Slay at the 2000 Olympics, he returned home to Dagestan and contemplated retirement. In my sports career, I lost my second Olympic Games being an absolute favorite. When you are a person who has learned to struggle with yourself every day, losing your goal is, is very hard to accept. But then he reflected on one of the teachings from his coach Dmitry Mendeshvili, who once said, in sports, expectation of victory is the wrong motivation. Really great champions should enjoy the process of training itself. Satyev returned to Kresnyars for another eight years, where he went on a run matched by very few folks. He won two more Olympic gold medals and three more world championships, putting him in a tier of godlike status in the wrestling world. To this day, he's one of only three people to win three Olympic gold medals in wrestling. I believe Satyev's legacy is that he has proven himself to be the best freestyle wrestler of all time. I think what Satyev was able to do um, during his run is the most impressive thing that any wrestler has ever done. I mean, clearly John Smith, John Smith winning six golds in a row is ultra impressive as well. But, you know, Satyev has three Olympic gold medals. And he has multiple world titles. And again, it's even impressive to me, like I said, to like in 99, you say, hey, bro, Adam, you know, you go wrestle. That, that takes like, takes a lot of um, class to do that. And his brother goes and wins the world championship that year. But I think that Satyev's legacy is that it, he is the best freestyle wrestler that's ever lived. After Satyev retired in 2012, he went into politics, and today he lives in Moscow with his family, where he's a politician by day, but often spends time speaking to young wrestlers. I talked to the young wrestlers when they didn't want to train because it was hard. I said, I'm very sorry that I'm not your age anymore. I would give a lot to be at the very beginning of my way, and then again, go through this difficult way. I would give a lot to do it all over again. 
to be at the very beginning of my career. And that's the end to slaying Satya. For more audio docs from Wrestling Changed My Life, please check out The Smiths, which starts at episode 200, and Assembly Fall, which is episode 145. Thank you all so much for listening. We love you. Go wrestling. God bless. From Wrestling Changed My Life, this is Slang Satyev. If you'd like to help us spread the word, please leave a review and tell your friends about this episode. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and every major listening app you can think of. If you're listening on your smartphone, tap or swipe on the cover art of this podcast. You'll find episode show notes and offers from our sponsor, Spartan Combat. Please support our show by supporting them at SpartanCombat.com. Slang Satyev was written, edited, and produced by me, Ryan Warner. Story consulting by Raleigh Peterkin. Custom music by Gary Lanelli. Assistant producer, Lake Waters. And business manager, Tanner Warner. Without you folks, this episode would not be possible, so thank you. And last but not least, a huge thank you to Brandon Slay and everyone who participated in this story. Slang Sativa was produced by Wrestling Changed My Life. For all information about this series, please go to WrestlingChangeMyLife.com. Peace!